What up, y'all? Your boy Cruz is pulling up to the gym. Probably the one place in the world that I simultaneously love and hate at the same time. Like, I feel bad on the days that I skip the gym, but on the days when I don't want to go and I still go, I never feel bad on those days. I love having to back out of a parking spot because somebody decided to take up two whole parking spots. Freaking Jags. Hey, what up y'all? Mr. Cruz here, the hardest worker in the room, back with another video. And in today's video, I'm gonna show you guys how you can create your own categories and add and save your plugins that you favorite and use the most often. So anybody who knows me knows that I came from Reason and Reason, this process was so much simpler uh, and FL is just a little bit more complicated, but I'm gonna show you guys how to do this. So what I wanna do is I recently installed a plugin called XO. Um, so I'm gonna go to my plugin database and I wanna go to installed. Uh, and generators and VST. So here is the plugin that I want to use, XO. Um, so I am going to pretty much open this one, and I'm going to do it this way just because, like, I think this way is is better because it also saves the image of the um, of the plugin. So I have my plugin open. Now I want to do is I want to go up here to where it says generators, right? The one that's on top, and this is where all of your categories are. So um, I've created some categories, and I want to add this one to this category right here, where it says sampler, where it has all the samplers that I use most often in FL. So I'm going to go here to this drop down menu and making sure that I have that category selected. I'm going to go here and I'm going to go to add to plugin database flag as favorite. When I do that, it's going to tell me, give me a little confirmation. Yes, that's what I want to do. And bam, now EXO is in the category labeled as sampler. So if I were to go over here now, um, and I go to sampler, boom, I'm going to see EXO there. So not only that, but this is also something else. Like if you've ever created um, or kind of messed up, you've added a plugin into a category that you didn't want to, and like it's kind of difficult, you don't know what to do to delete that. So you can also delete your categories or rename them or change them however you wish. So let's say, um, let's go under synth. Let's say under synth, uh, I've got isotope iris two, and I don't want that in there anymore. So what I do is I just right click it and then I would delete file. So it's gonna give you this warning. This warning does not mean that it's gonna delete that plugin in general. It just means that it's gonna remove that plugin from that category. So once I do that, bam, it's done. And I can always still go under um, installed generators and I'll still be able to find isotope iris two. The last thing that you can also do is renaming whatever category that you have created. So let's say for sampler, um, instead of having it be sampler, I wanted it to call it, I wanted to call it samplers because FL already has a category called sampler. So I'm going to right click it and then I'm going to open up Windows shell menu. And from here, I'm going to click properties. And then here, I'm just going to add an S to the end of that to differentiate that from the sampler category. That's kind of how I did it because I capitalized it, but it really doesn't matter. Um, you can do this with um, with all the categories that you create. And you can actually do it with the categories that you did not create. So if I wanted to change patchers and I wanted to call it um, miscellaneous, blah, 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 whatever, uh, just kind of to, to mess around, bam, and it'll change that. And you can also delete those categories in there as well. Um, I wouldn't, I would just kind of leave, you know, whatever's there as it is, but there you go. So there you go. Super simple way for you to be able to create your own categories and start adding and creating these folders of plugins that you use most frequently. Because in the end, that's going to streamline your workflow. And when you streamline your workflow, you end up making more beats. And when you make more beats, you know what you should do? Head on over to BeatStars and start uploading and promoting and selling those beats to people all over the world. Because BeatStars is the number one platform for producers like you and me to be able to monetize what we love and what we're doing as a hobby anyways and turn our passions into a profit. So if you're interested in joining me over on BeatStars, hit the link in the description. Make sure to use my code CRU230 and I'm going to hook you up with your first month of BeatStars completely for free. That's what I got for you guys. Let me know in the comments below what you guys think. Make sure you guys like, comment, and subscribe. It's your boy, Mr. Cruz. Out.